Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life with best-selling author and coach Kathy Williams, a show to help you tap into the support of the universe and access the abundance that's available in every area of your life. Listen in for conversations and tools to create more ease, joy, and possibility with family, relationships, business, and living. Kathy's joyful perspective will help you tap into your own wisdom and create a life of presence and abundance your way. Listen live on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, or anytime on iTunes or at IOM FM. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life. I am looking forward to, the, to today's conversation with Sophie Michalko. And before we dive in, you know, listening to the intro, it's so fun. It's like, I would love for you to cre create a life of abundance your way. And the fun part about it is it doesn't have to look like anyone else's way. It doesn't have to be anyone else's way. It's your way. So I love to hear from you, your questions, your comments. Like this week, I received some some comments and emails from listeners and, and people who I've facilitated that just literally made me tear up. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, one lady, in fact, like three minutes ago, she messaged me. She said, I, I watch you on YouTube and I'm just so grateful. And I was like, oh, I really love hearing from you. Not only like the things you love, but also the things that are confusing and the things that, that you'd like to hear more about. Because that way we can really dive into what's relevant. Because I wouldn't be here if not for listeners like you. So Thank you for listening to the show, and um, a great place to reach me is meetkathywilliams.com. It also has a radio show um, link, that, um, and even though that page is kind of under construction, but you, you can um, find shows there. You can also find classes at the upcoming page and um, get a free uh, Create Your Life exercise uh, at right on the main page. So there, there's all sorts of fun goodies and things there at meetkathywilliams.com. And today's conversation topic is being versus doing. Are they at odds? When I'm being, am I just still? What is this? <laughs> and I'm so grateful for, for Sophie uh, you know, suggesting this topic because it, there are some fun things to play with in this area. So I'm going to introduce Sophie. Sophie's amazing. Like you have, how many businesses do you have, Sophie? <laughs> A speaking bi business? Uh, four. Four Currently businesses. Four. All right. <laughs> yeah. oh. A speaking business, a coaching uh, business. What I'm else? Uh, I hear you. I hear you. Oh dear, she. We hear her, but she doesn't hear us. So um. Okay. You know, I know Sophie from oh, her work in access consciousness. I cannot hear. Um, and she's facilitated all over the world because uh, she speaks French, a uh, native French speaker, and um, I'm just gonna let her know. I can hear you. I hear you. But we don't hear you now. We heard you before. <laughs> oh, she's rebooting or something. All right. Um, so, ha, huh, yeah, I hear her. I did. Anyway. Um, okay. Well, <laughs> if not, I can talk a lot. And so I can talk about being versus doing for a while. <laughs> However, it is fun to have a conversation. So, um, yeah. I'm back. I'm back. All right. Yay, you're back. Okay. <laughs> For a while, we could hear you. But anyway. I know. It was um, so, so, I would love to hear Sophie. 
Like, what piqued your interest about talking about being versus doing? All right. So, one of the projects that I'm currently working on is I'm creating an incubator for startups in my town in Pasadena. And I was talking to a friend who said she was so tired of hearing entrepreneurs talk about the hustle and how they have to hustle and work so hard and work long hours. And she's like, who would want to do that? And I thought about this for a second. When I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, I often get them out of what it is they want to do. And, how, and I ask them, tell me about what it's going to be like once you have that job or that business or the money or the relationship. Tell me what it's going to be like. And a lot of times, it's very easy to say, oh, okay, I want a big career because I want to be acknowledged. So now all you have to do is look for ways to be acknowledged in your daily life. And then that big career will show up much more easily than if you give that big career the job of making you feel acknowledged. Does that make sense? I love that. It definitely makes sense. And, and, you know, I teach this course called Radical Abundance. And we do this with each other and we sit with it for each other. And it's like, okay, what is it you're asking for? And now, what are the qualities of that? Like, what are the energies of that? And, and tap into that. And we're just going to be with you in that energy. Like, let us know first what they are. Okay, I feel like a real sense of accomplishment and I feel blissed or I feel whatever. Yeah. And then, okay, cool. Now be that and, and like let that all circulate and we're going to be in it with you. And it's really powerful. It really is. It really is. So there, are, there is something to be said about taking action. So I want to I wanna point out that when you're being everything that you are you are so you know i'm a pretty active person i have to do a lot of things i i love making videos i love talking to people all of that but when you're being all of that when you're being yourself those actions are going to be very organic it's not going to there's going to be no effort or no force having to motivate yourself or having to force yourself and that's where for me focusing on who are you being versus what action you need to take will actually lead to those actions. So you're right in saying that being and doing are not opposite of each other, but when you're being something, the doing gets included. You get to do as well. Yes. Yeah. And, and thank you for that because it's so funny. I was, I was watching this video of JP Sears yesterday on ah. YouTube. And if you guys haven't seen him, have you seen him, Sophie? You oh, know, yeah, yeah, I love him. Okay. He's so funny. <laughs> he's hilarious. And, and he did this video. If you guys haven't seen him, go check him out. He, he is masterful at, at making fun of new age stuff. And, and he's brilliant. Of, of find there's one on becoming gluten free, gluten intolerant, becoming gluten intolerant, hilarious. All right, so he was doing this one on the law of attraction, and he said, "Okay, so I've made my vision board, and I sit in front of it for 15 hours a day, right? And so wow. because I'm attracting this, I know it's coming. I'm just being, right?" <laughs> And, and I was thinking, oh, how fun it is that we have this show today because it's really, yes, you can be while being still, but you can actually be while doing as well, like taking action on, you know, if, if what's on your vision board is, um, you know, a, a beautiful person in your life, like taking some sort of actions for that to show up because sitting in your living room for 15 hours a day, every day for six years, isn't actually going to like bring that to you. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Serendipity? Have you seen that movie? I don't think I have. No. 
it's a beautiful movie. I, I strongly recommend it. I love it. But the the female lead uh, has a best friend who can't remember the uh, Molly. Anyway, she, she the best friend who um, has a store that sells all the new agey stuff, you know. So she has a lot of people who come to her store to buy stuff to attract love, and it's very funny because she's like, "Oh yes, you need this candle and you need this." essence and this guided meditation and all of that and then after they leave she's like if only they will go to the bar down the street they will get laid right away which was <laughs> so funny because it's so exactly what happens in life like you have to come up with some process before you actually go live your life and i have a, a coach that uh, helps me with my public speaking business and he made fun of me last week because he was like all of your questions you would know the answer to your questions if you only did what I asked you to do so if you if you were actually taking the actions that I'm telling you to do you would know all of this and it's so true like how many of us are trying to think before we do so being is not thinking being has nothing to do with thinking. In fact, Kathy, how many times did, were you going to meet somebody and you thought about the conversation you were going to have with that person, then you open your mouth and something completely different comes out, right? Oh, the number of times is extraordinary. I mean, especially if I'm running late, right? Then, of course, as I'm driving, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm late because blah, blah, blah. And so, like making up the conversation about being late in my head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, and I don't know about you, but I am terrible with myself in my head. I'm like, you're not good enough and you're stupid and you should quit. And da, 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 da. It's terrible. And then I speak to somebody and I'm like, oh, I'm totally fine. Like none of that actually gets spoken. So please, like anybody who's listening to this, if you can do one thing to the different is stop listening to your head, right? Your head <laughs> <is not> know... <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything. Well, and how often do we make things worse in our heads, like even 10 times worse than actual, the actual real life experience? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always worse in our head. Always. And, and I, I mean, yeah, it just, it, that's why anything. Okay. So what I noticed recently is I've been, I've been judging myself because I've been thinking that I'm wasting my time. There are certain things that I do a lot during my day that I feel are like I'm wasting my time. I should not do them. But for some strange reason, I cannot stop doing them. So there is like playing a game on my phone or um, looking up. I'm, I'm going to be taking a big trip in June. So looking up stuff about my trip in June, right? So I'm always like, oh, I, I need to stop doing those things because they're useless. And I realized the other day, actually, what they do is they get me out of my head. So oh, they're like almost a little meditation for me. Or they're everything that people do to get out of their head. Meditation, prayer, you know, um, sports, all of that. That's what it does for me. So I, I, wow. I really should not judge myself. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And so it's like looking at the, that thing that you keep returning to and, and asking like, well, what does this actually contribute to me? Like you wouldn't be yeah. doing it if it didn't contribute something, right? Like exactly. stress relief or whatever it is. Yeah. So just asking that simple question, like, hey, how, what is this doing for me? What is it contributing? So powerful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For and sure. and. Even like when we're not choosing something, because I'm going to Europe and, and facilitating over the summer. And I kept saying to myself, I have to look at the venues in London. I have to look at the, you know, the Airbnbs in Vienna. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, okay, well, is there a reason you're not doing it? And I got, it's not time yet. 
And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, cool. All right, it's not the time. So I don't have to beat myself up about that. Just like, okay, cool. Well, let me know when it is time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And and it's, it's especially for, I mean, this is just a little different thing, but especially the thing online, so anything that we do online, it it changes as the demand changes. So, like, if we if we listen to our head, we're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I have to do this now because you know, otherwise, da 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 da. But the next day, a lot of things will have shifted because today, a lot of people will be on to look for things. So, when we're being calm, which, by the way, did you know that when um, in the Muslim religion, when somebody runs. It's an embarrassment to themselves, and it really, it really, so it's something that really hit me strong because I run a lot, especially if I'm like, if I go want to go somewhere and I'm in a hurry, I'm always like, or maybe not running, but I'm walking fast, and I always feel bad when I do that. Like I feel there's a part of me that hates doing that, rushing, running, and then I found out that in the Muslim religion it's actually embarrassing for somebody to run. Somebody should not be running. It's, it's, they're bringing embarrassment to themselves. And I thought, whoa, that's such a different way of being than what I could think about. For me, running is like, oh, I have a lot to do. I have a lot to do. I'm a busy person. I'm an important person. It's totally different. Totally different. So that's also why like, when you're being, you actually end up doing only the things that match your being. So yeah, you may want to be an, an important person or you may want to, you may be a busy person, but suddenly you're like, oh, but things are going to take taken care of. I know they are taken care of. Great. I don't have to rush. And then that's a whole other energy. So it's very interesting to play with all of that. I look forward to playing with it more when we get back from our break. Yeah, so when we get back, everybody, we will talk about showing up and how we show up and how that makes all the difference as well. So thanks for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life today with Kathy and Kathy Williams and Sophie Mihalko. And we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Namaste, friends. This is Deva Pramala Mitten. And we want to let you know that we will be in America and Canada this May. We'll be coming with our Wings of Mantra World Tour, coming up the West Coast to Boulder, Santa Fe, Sedona, Scottsdale, Santa Barbara, L.A., Marin, Santa Cruz, San Jose, Escondido, Edmonds, and up to Canada to Victoria and Vancouver. You can find details on our website, devapramalmiten.com. Hope to see you there. Lots of love. Namaste. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Dr. Kevin here, and I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on The Dr. Kevin Show, where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today, so you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. Would you like to have a life of more clarity and abundance? What's possible for you when you get out of your own way? Connect with Kathy Williams for private coaching or join her online to transform your relationship with abundance in every area of your life with the Radical Abundance Course. Kathy also travels, facilitating radical abundance and access consciousness bars and foundation around the world. She'll be in London, Hawaii, Hilton Head, and other fun locations soon. 
Visit www.meetkathywilliams.com for a class schedule, to connect with Kathy, or invite her to your region and get some free goodies. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everybody. This is Kathy Williams here today with Sophie Mejalko, and we're having Hello. a conversation about being versus doing. And before we get back to the conversation, I just have a couple of things I'd love to invite you to, one of which is a class that is uh, starting next Thursday, or Friday, actually, on constructs and where we've bought certain things as true that aren't actually true that are limiting us. And um, so it's, it's based on, but not really required reading, the book called Beyond the Utopian Ideals, where we're trying to fit ourselves to being a certain way. Being, <laughs> that's our conversation today. Being a certain way and doing certain things actually that don't really fit who we are. However, we've decided that that's the way to be in the world. That's the right thing to chase after. That's that's what's right. And so um, it's just an amazing conversation as we start to unwind these different things. Like, And what can show up is a totally different possibility. So that is coming up. And also next week, I have a class called Clearing the Points of View Between You and a Life You Love. A life of your dreams um, because I had a lot of those points of view <laughs> that were limiting me for a long long time and um, you know when we let go of those more of what we desire can show up in miraculous ways in surprising ways so um, you can find those at meetkathywilliams.com forward slash upcoming and that's where you'll also find my live stuff in London and Vienna and Colorado this summer. So um, check it out there. Meet KathyWilliams.com. And um, I'd love to just jump back into this conversation, Sophie, and yes. um, just, you know, ask what, what kind of led you to, I know we have a couple of things we're going to talk about, about, about showing up and how we show up makes a difference. I just wanted to um, hear a little bit about how this idea of how we show up and learning that impacted your life. Like, like, um, you know, tapping into the space of being that you desire and how mm -hmm. that actually has, uh, has made a difference in maybe some of the situations in your life. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Actually, I want to I want to share a little personal thing. So, I have a really hard time with how I look in the world, and a lot of times I'm in in great great judgment of how I look, Wh whether it's on camera or somebody takes a picture, all of that. And this has been very old, and I just it never feels like that's me. Like I'm always almost looking at a stranger. And it, it really uh, handicapped me, especially lately where I want to, so I, be, I was an actor, I did a lot of things on stage, and now I'm going back to the stage with um, public speaking. So it, it has stifled my progress as a public speaker because of that point of view, which I know better than fighting that point of view, so instead I'm looking at, okay, what, what, what's there? How can I change that? And I ended up speaking to 
a friend of mine who is going through the same kind of spiritual growth that I'm going through right now. And she, she mentioned to me, she said, you know, you are, she loves being around me. So anytime she can get time with me, she's always so excited, so grateful. And it's a really fun feeling. And she said, it's who you are being, Sophie, that I love, right? So it has nothing to do with how I look or even what I've done before or what I'm, I do in her life it, because I'm a little bit of a mentor for her, but it's more just my like who I am being with her. And I was going to say it's my energy, but the truth is that she's been with me when I was up and when I was down. So I was always different energies with, um, I feel, I, I'm comfortable being completely anything with her. And what I noticed is that it doesn't matter whether I'm up or down, she still enjoys being around me. So there is Ooh. something to be said about the essence of who we are it has nothing to do with how we feel or the, even the energy we're choosing to be, even though that can have a great impact, but even if you just look at who you are as a person, just you is what makes a difference. And I will always remember, I do a lot of videos, especially for the French speaking side of my business. Since I'm not there, I do a lot of videos. And one day this woman picked me up in Tunisia and we, she had never met me in person. So she picked me up from the airport and she says to me, I have to tell you, you are so much more beautiful in person than on your videos. And I was like, what do you mean? She said, there's this, this vibe about you, this, this great vibration about you that I just love. And it's funny because after, you know, 15, 16 hours of flying, you, know, you don't feel great. Um, so that was a very <laughs> interesting input. So I want to. I want to point that out. Of course, it's important for me to be responsible about how we're showing up and the energy we're putting out there. And at the same time, it's also like you don't really have to worry too much about it. Just like I love being around Kathy. We actually met in person once, I think. And I love being around her. So it's really, it's, really the, it's really the person. It's really the... the the being that you are and you, that being is beautiful and if you just let that being be without having to force it into your thinking or your expectations it it seduces everybody i think <laughs> i love that and and it brings me to thoughts of a friend because this friend considers himself an introvert Right. Uh -huh. And so when you're out in public, when he's out in public, he's very reserved. In fact, a lot of people don't actually like him. And I was like, yeah, but he's way different. If you get to know him, he's way different um, when he's alone with you. And, and it's because when he's alone with you, he's being himself. And when he's out in public, he is not being himself. He is no. like when, when, your being, there's a sense of ease about it because you don't have to try, right? You don't exactly. have to try to be. And and when he's in public, he is trying. <laughs> and and so like I I've seen people like oh yeah I've met him before and I you know there's something weird about him and I'm like yeah it's because he's not being, he's like putting on something else a front yeah. yeah. And, and um, there's an ease about people when they're BS. Like, regardless yeah. of whether you're fast and doing things or, or you're slow and at ease, it doesn't have anything to do with what you're doing. It's, it's a, a, there's an ease about it. Okay. I want to share one more conversation I had recently. Um, I live in Los Angeles, so it's very easy for me to be involved in entertain, um, entertainment industry events, right? But I'm consciously not, not choosing to be in the entertainment industry, even though I know I'm an entertainer, I know it, but I still don't choose to be in the entertainment industry. On, uh, was it on Tuesday night? I went to an event that 
happen to be for the entertainment industry. So I got to speak with people I haven't talked to in a while. And it was amazing to me how much proving everybody was trying to do. Not necessarily proving they were good at what they do, although some of them were, but even just proving their reason for being there. Like, oh, well, I'm here because I'm a writer. I'm here because I'm a producer. I'm like, I don't care. You're here. I don't care, like, why you're here. You're here. That's all that matters to me. And from the moment that that, that, that energy showed up again, I was like, oh, this is so boring to me. Like, I have no interest in talking to people who are trying to prove who they're being or their value. It's boring. I'm like, I'd much rather be with cashiers from the grocery store. Like, that, they're more interested. <laughs> they're like, I'm just a cashier. You know what I mean? Like, it's just that, that energy, that conversation of I having, and I understand the entertainment industry is really tough. I get it. And at the same time, I'm very blessed that I know some people. I met some people who are huge stars today, but I met them when they were starting. And Cassie, the reason they got so big was because from the get-go, they did not try to prove anything. They were like, this is me. Take it or leave it. And today, if I told you their name, you know who they are. They're huge. You know what I mean? So I wish I could tell those people at the party, hey, don't try to be something you're not, but it's not my place. Just figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, it's so interesting because I was with a, a comedian. Uh, in, I was um, in, at her event a couple of days ago, and, and she was talking about how when she was in L.A., she would go to these parties, and, and um, she, she said everybody started their conversation with, well, I just, so I just came back from Greece. I just finished a movie, you know, about this. I just, you know, and... And she said to them, oh, well, I just finished working at the homeless shelter. <laughs> and and she said that was like, when she would say stuff like that, everyone would like go somewhere else, like not be with her. And and then she started wow. saying, well, I'm gathering, I'm gathering data from the homeless shelter um, for my next big event. And then they were all like, oh, well, what's it like? Right? Like, what's it like there? What are the people like? What are they doing? You know, it's like they, everybody, everybody has curiosity about something, right? Yeah. No matter how many millions of dollars you have or how poor you are, everybody has curiosity about, about something. And yeah. when you're being curious, you're being, right? There's a sense yeah. of like, huh, what else? You know? <laughs> Yeah, I, I've been playing on some dating apps and it's so hard to like start the conversation with somebody that you just see pictures on, you don't know anything about them. So my favorite question is, what do you want me to know about you? Like, tell me, what would you like me to know about you? I'm, I don't know what question to ask. I, I, don't, I haven't met you yet. So I'm like, okay, you tell me what you want me to know. And that tells me a lot. You know, like, is that? Is that your first question to them? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I am Sophie. Tell me what you'd like to, me to know about you. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> yeah. My, so, what do you want me to know? You know, um, say it again. No, I'm just repeating it. Go for it. Okay. Um, All right. Yes. Yesterday was my seven-year-old's birthday. He turned seven. Oh. And uh, there was a moment when it was just like, he's not being him. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and so my husband asked, who are you being? Which was really fun to hear out of my husband. <laughs> wow. like, who are you being, Koa? Yeah. Because, I mean, in life, we, we have all these different people uh, who we've learned to mimic or we've seen behave a certain way. And a lot of times it's really not being true to us. We take on, um, on their way of being. We approach you know, the situation at hand you know, from their perspective instead of what's true to us. 
And so who am I being is a really useful question. Nice. I like that. Yeah. So did you want to talk about um, the different results? that being something being something different will create yeah we only have a couple <laughs> more minutes before the break but so, do you want to yeah mention so that it's, it's kind of like yes and we can we can continue the that conversation after the break if, if it it calls you know um during the break sophie and i were talking about how how you show up makes a difference, right? Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> so we'll definitely, <laughs> and, and we all know this, whether we know it cognitively or not, we all know that how we show up makes a difference because we've had that experience. So um, thanks for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everybody. We're going to continue this conversation after just a few minutes. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free ascendinghearts.com Would you like to have a life of more clarity and abundance? What's possible for you when you get out of your own way? Connect with Kathy Williams for private coaching or join her online to transform your relationship with abundance in every area of your life with the Radical Abundance Course. Kathy also travels, facilitating radical abundance and access consciousness bars and foundation around the world. She'll be in London, Hawaii, Hilton Head, and other fun locations soon. Visit www.meetkathywilliams.com for a class schedule to connect with Kathy or invite her to your region and get some free goodies. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday. And together, we can discover what's really going on. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everybody. It's Kathy Williams here with Sophie Mielhalko, and we are having a conversation about being and doing. And are they separate? Are they different? How are they different? And can you do both simultaneously? Uh, which we unpacked and said, well, yes, in fact, doing works better when you're being. <laughs> <laughs> Especially yeah, being you and not being someone else, <laughs> being someone else. So, uh, okay, we were about to talk about right before the break how we show up and how that makes a difference, right? And we all know this, especially if you're a parent or work with children, right? We can approach this as the child uh, with uh, one way of being 
And that totally creates more pandemonium and, and do the exact same thing in, in another space of being, being a different energy. And it's just what, what falls into place and, and works, works really well with that child. Yeah. In fact, I did that last night where I just got intensely angry at, um, with my, with my son, um, you know, for, for kicking the other son. And, and it was like, wow, you know, I didn't actually have to come from that space. And if I had chosen a different energy, if I had chosen, um, a different way of being, uh, it would have definitely created a different effect. So, <laughs> Nice. He said, nice, this, nice, is, nice. this is my worst birthday ever. And I said uh, to him, oh, okay. Well, well, tell me three things you liked. And then he told me, I liked recess. I liked having cupcakes with my class. I liked this. And then I said, okay. So you liked recess. You liked having cupcakes. And you liked, I don't know, watching the wild crap in the morning. I said, okay, awesome. What else did you like? And he came up with three more. And then I repeated those. And I repeated the other three. So I repeated six back to him, and then I said, and, and what else did you like? And, and then I repeated nine back to him, and he, what else did you like? And, and pretty soon it was like, oh, not such a bad day after all. Yes. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Yay. Good job. <laughs> Saved that one. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Cool. Um, but it, it can be something as small as washing the counter, like cleaning the counter to how we make a phone call and and how we show up makes a difference. We could be all grumbly and frustrated and angry cleaning the counter and we could just be the space of like, oh yeah, I'm I'm just, you know, not even thinking about it and just doing it and it gets done in like twenty five seconds. Right? And and from that space of being, not thinking too much about it, it happens a lot faster. And when we're all mad, er, 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 grumbling and groaning, yeah. And, yeah, I see you nodding your head. So, so what occurs to you, Sophie? Yeah, um, the one thing that I noticed a lot is when I'm working on something that would take other people a lot of time. And usually, like I love working on databases and spreadsheets and things that don't require creativity, but just doing, right? A lot of doing. And a lot of times, because I enjoy doing it, I, I'm not worried about it. I'm like, oh, that's, that's fine. I'm just going to tackle it and be fine. And I cannot tell you the amount of times where I would, like, I would start with a spreadsheet where I had, you know, 100 rows to, like, treat the data. And then after working for an hour on 20 rows, suddenly it was 50 rows that were left instead of 80. So what I noticed is sometimes when you're being the energy of like, I've got this, or, you know, it's, and it's going to be okay, it's going to be fine, then the universe, God, energy, whatever you want to call it, makes it okay, makes it fine makes it easy because that's who you're being in the moment. You're being like, I got this. And everything we comes to show you that, yep, you got this. Absolutely. And that never fails. It never fails. And I always blew people's minds because I'm very good at being like, okay, what, ener what energy am I going to be in this situation? Be that energy. And it changes so radically as long as I don't expect it to change. And that is the one caveat that I have is that if you are expecting it to be different than what it is, it cannot change. But if you're okay with what is, and you're going to be like, it's going to be fine. I'm, I'm going to go do whatever it takes to do it. Then, oh, so much more ease can come. So much more ease can show up. And Cassie, I know you I love know that. This. Um, walking into a room, right? So before we enter a room, before I go to a meeting, before I enter a room, I check in with myself, like, how am I being right now? And I see, okay, do I need to lower my barriers? Do I need to have more tolerance, more patience, especially with kids? And then I choose something different. 
and it will create something different there. And like originally, I was doing it uh, selfishly because I wanted to feel better, but I finally realized, oh, actually, it impacts everybody. It changes the energy. It changes who people are being with me when I changes who I'm being. Absolutely. Yeah. And and I love that you mentioned that, it, it, even if you don't say a word. Right? Oh, absolutely. Like, <laughs> like my, my friend who, who is totally himself when at home or with an, one other person and, like, not himself when he's out in the world, right? It's like people pick up on that whether you say it. Right. They just pick up on it. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. So I want to challenge anybody who listens to this today because I recently had to judge a, a contest, a public speaking contest. And so I listened to these great orators that had amazing ways of delivering content. And I was so disturbed by what they chose to talk about. Now, granted, really? when you're doing a con yeah, when you're doing a contest, I know you don't want to bring things that are too controversial because it's a, you're taking a chance. So I understand that they chose some topics that were pretty easy. However, there is a danger when the rest of the world is innovating and moving forward on some topics, and then you're talking about something that nobody has talked about for five or ten years. That actually, for me, is irresponsible. So I don't know many people today who publicly will say you need to be perfect. I, in fact, I, I don't think if you go on YouTube, you'll find anybody who made any video about being perfect for at least 10, 15 years. Don't you agree? Well, well, and that's the beautiful thing, because if we look at, like, actors from, let's say, the 1950s or, you know, stuff like that, they have a whole lot of per perfect going on, right? <laughs> like, and, exactly. and if if people were to show up that way today, we'd be like, you're so fake, right? <laughs> so, so it was really shocking to me that somebody spent seven minutes doing a speech and six minutes out of the seven minutes were, was about how important it is to be perfect. And Really? I, yeah. And I and also they they won the contest, which really made me mad, because for me wow. that's called, that's irresponsibility for me to be. It's irresponsible today to to put something out there that makes you and other people miserable, right? So wow. I would like to challenge anybody who listens to this. I understand that sometimes talking about something that's innovative or, you know, new is, can be scary because you don't know how it's going to be received. But I know, mm -hmm. I know with every single cell of my being that unless you have the guts to share what it is that you know, what it is that you know is true for you in that moment, regardless of what people were talking about an hour, a week, a month, a year ago, if you share what's true for you, you will actually be you and everything that you want to be and have and create in the world will show up. Okay. That's my challenge for people. All right. <laughs> well, and, and the other exercise that kind of goes along with that is to, again, as, as was men mentioned, like very early on in this conversation, it's like, what are the energies of that thing showing up? Right? What I would like to have, what I would like to be. What are the energies of that? Guaranteed it's not contracted and icky and frustrated, <laughs> unless you're asking for that. <laughs> it's like tapping into those energies in advance and not like JP Sears sitting in front of a vision board for 15 hours a day expecting it to show up, but like going yeah. out into the world with that vibration, with that that quality, and that's attractive, right? I mean, that's an attractive force, not only to people, but to other like energies, to, to mm -hmm. animals, to experiences. Um, you know, I just, I think of a friend and uh, uh, we were having a conversation one day and, and 
she was kind of upset that the guy she was seeing had gone for coffee with another woman. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, ultimately, by the end of the conversation, she was over it. She was over it, and she was, like, excited for life again and, and stuff like that. And what else is out there? You know, if it's not him, something greater. And she went to a party, and that night she met an amazing guy and also also like was offered this awesome job right and and so i'm yeah. just curious if we had a sliding doors type experience uh situation where you know sliding doors is this movie where it, like <laughs> it shows two different scenarios if we had that and like she had still gone with this energy of blah blah, blah you know that he's gone out for coffee and there and there and she went to the same event with that kind of energy <laughs> what would have occurred <laughs> oh, no. that would not have been pretty or actually nothing would have occurred that's it there's nothing it would have just like been blah. people um, not attracted yeah yeah so and 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 to me choosing how you're going to be in the world is probably, I'm going to be honest, one of the most challenging work you can do because you need to really look at honestly how you want to be in the world. And it's also the most rewarding thing you can choose. When you're really consciously choosing how you're going to be, wow, the, it's magic. It's completely magic. That is so true. And it's it's kind of along the lines of Joe Dispenza. He's like, he, he talks a lot about like, if you're reliving those past emotions, which you're not, a, you actually didn't like, you're more committed to the past than you are to the future that you'd really like to create. And it's this yeah. constant thing because that those past emotions, like the things you've cultivated for years and years are a fallback. They can be super easy to just fall back into, right? If someone's used to the victim pattern or if someone's used to being sad about scenarios or used to getting frustrated, like it can be really different and even uncomfortable to be like, nope, you know what? I'm really not going to choose the frustration anymore. And every time you find it, you're like, oh, nope, nope, not choosing that. I know that was the old way. But this is what I prefer. I'm gonna I'm gonna choose the energy that I'd really like to cultivate as my future. Nice. Yes, cultivating that energy, spending time, and I I didn't really get how important it is to spend time with ourselves until this. Spending time with ourselves and being conscious about who we are, how we are showing up in the world. Poof man that's what where that's where the work is that is where the work <laughs> is it oh. truly is yeah yeah and and i think you know for for me one of the things that's really helped me see how i show up is actually waking up early and just writing and writing 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 whatever yeah is in my head whatever comes out it's like oh interesting <laughs> That's where I'm functioning from. Is that really what I'd like to be functioning from? And I have, and I do have a show. We have a show on Sexy Mom Abundant Life about waking up early. So it's in the archives on YouTube oh, and iMom.fm and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, it's been really key and useful for me. And I know you said that you keep your phone off in the morning for a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or maybe you did. <laughs> I used to. I used to. Um, <laughs> well, you know what? That inspired me to do it, Sophie. And I was like, for okay. one hour at least, I'm not doing the phone. Because it's like other people's agendas in the phone. Other people's needs, other people's pulls, other people's desires of like what they want my attention on. Instead of like, no, where is really relevant to me and going to create the future that I desire? So you nice. you inspired that in me, whether you do it or not. <laughs> I, I, do, I do something different now. When my daughter is in my house, I tell her she is not allowed to enter, and I give her a certain time that she can enter my room. But before that, she only if there's blood or fire. Otherwise, 
she cannot enter my room until that time so that I have a little buffer time between waking up and talking to her. That's the, the new deal. So Love it. It works. So before yeah. we end, I would just love to have people know where they can contact you uh, at, at your best you know, place yeah, to do that to and still- anything else. Yeah, go to sophiemichel.com, S-O-P-H-I-E-M-I-C-H-E-L-E.com. There's a contact form there, and I respond to that contact form. Don't worry, it doesn't go into the void. Um, And I'm on Facebook. Right now, if you would like to check out something really fun, I would love for you all to check out thegiftedp.com. So it's the, and then G-I-F-T-E-D-T-E-E.com. It's the, my newest adventure, and I'd love for you all to check it out. <laughs> I am actually going to get one of those for my dad. Uh, I saw that, Gifted Tea. I thought that's brilliant. Um, so thegiftedtea.com, really cool. I, yeah, uh, <laughs> so touching. So thank I you do. so much, Sophie. I love you. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And again, let us know what you love, what you're challenged by, what topics you would like to hear at meetkathywilliams.com. And we'll be on iom.fm next Thursday. And if you can't wait that long, it's there at the same website in the archives or on YouTube, iTunes, and